Might save that for games five and six. We head on to Miramar, though, for the second game of the... Talking about the teams that are down near Porto yeah. Paraiso, and that is one of them. 36 Cartel, that's their drop here on Miramar. Uh, so they'll be quite happy to see that initial circle shift. And, you know, yeah. if, God forbid, this heads out into the water, they'll be one of oh, the no. first teams across. Oh, no. Or that, well, I suppose. You've, you've absolutely jinxed them. Cherry's dead. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Really <laughs> unfortunate. He's gone far up to the north. I mean, he's not really expecting much there, to be honest. Uh, he's driven all the way up along the highway. And for some reason, at least as far as he's concerned, Game Home is in virtue of it moving out over the water. They'd have one of the better positions to, to play from. Not something that I think is worth talking about just yet. We'll just have to sort of bide our time for the next minute or so and wait and see what the RNG gods have prepared for us in game two. Big spray from Poochils. Not quite going to be enough to get the better of Gems. If he would have kept the gun out, maybe there was a half second there as Gems jumped over the fence that he could have pegged another shot in, but then Gems will survive and start to fire back. And the same cannot be said for Thanawa as he is finished off by Young B on the rotation through Impala on a bike. And BN United will get a little bit of revenge. One kill on the board for this evening for BN United. Uh, at least in game two, they did get a couple, Ooh. I suppose, on the first. Ooh, nice, nice shots flash. from Flash. Gems goes down, and he's probably wondering where from. Yeah, Puchils can actually get this kill too, by the way. I like this little position. A little, little fun fact, I actually picked up a, a 1v4 in this particular spot once. I wouldn't believe it. I, I actually have it on video. Mm. So there you go, Jordan. Is this one of those situations where you've got someone else playing on uh, on your account? No. Or you, you had uh, oh, now, an okay. editing program that changed the, the name. <laughs> All right. Funny stories aside, that circle, though, that is exactly <laughs> what I was talking about prior, Jordan, as when I said Phase 2 is going to really dictate how this game is going to play out. I would have liked to actually have seen it in its entirety. Mm. Of course, twitch.tv slash PUBG esports map if you really want to go and see this. What it does do is it embodies Phase 1. It's basically still a 50% water 50% land but that land portion now is minuscule there is not a lot of space Porto Paraiso is going to be a safe haven for the majority of the teams they've got no choice the teams that are not in the circle early are going to have to go past these teams though to get into that city because it, there's no other way to really go around the teams that are already holding the the mountain range outside of the city this is going to be a very chaotic game for the next 10 to 15 minutes, then it'll have a slow point for about five minutes, and then it'll finish. I can already tell you that's how it's going to play out. Yeah, I would uh, I would be expecting it as well. Port the team that's trying to make it at this point in time. If you probably, if you haven't made it already, chances are you're probably a little bit too late to make it down uh, that road because there's a bunch of teams already set up on on the way. Puchils will get the knock onto How House. So Seiryu and Day Trade focusing. Their efforts on a little bit more of an inland position than Porto Paraiso for now. Nurins cleans up Nile, and that's a couple of players on the floor for Seiryu. Day Trade have come storming into this game, storming into this compound, and Seiryu had no idea what was headed in their direction. Yeah, and it's a really good position to hold as well. This little compound, nice and early on. It's only phase two. It's only the 12-minute mark. But with this circle, they're going to most likely remain, actually, for quite some time. Unless it goes really far north for phases three and four, uh, it moves away from that position. Day trade in a really good position now. Uh, for you would have to think that at least the next 10 to 15 minutes. Sunshine holds in the hay bales outside, but there's nothing he's going to be able to do. I mean, where does he even go? Realistically, he's just going to sit there tense for the next 10 minutes and hopes that, that he doesn't get found. Eagle 365, just north of pa uh, Porto Paraiso. This is sort of the highway uh, of the major road going through the city. And it really already sort of highlights that there's not much space here. Teams are struggling to sort of figure out where they're going to want to go. I will do that. Gets a few tags onto Jacob. Made in Thailand and AAP might actually take this fight here. The seat swap from Esqualusia, unsuccessful. Mad Dog hasn't taken any damage yet. CJ pushes up, but he loses the fight to Jacob. Made in Thailand. Are at least going to put up an effort here. Algen Bots, though, does get the immediate trade. So one for one. Esqualusia has that rock. That's certainly going to help by a bit of time. Duckman's on the other side of the road. You can see on the mini-map, be able to come in and really help out here as well. AAP have got to be super careful here in this fight against Made in Thailand. Yeah, Jacob down on the floor right now. Esqualusia trying to work his way around behind these smokes. He might be able to catch CJ and Mad Dog, but it's been spotted out by Evil. Patrick, what a spray though! Esqualusia. Ah, he drops Aldrin Bots. It was Aldrin Bots, not Evil Patrick. That does give up his position. 
But eventually, Ooh, the what? smokes get the better of him. Evil Patrick having a bit of a better view through it than what Esqualusia did. Maybe by virtue of the positioning, he was a bit closer. That wow. man's is plucked out of the air by Evil Patrick. Skeet shooting more than anything else. And Archangel Predator will hold strong. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice little win. You win the battle, but the war is still sort of uh, raging on behind you in this open landscape. And you can kind of see on the minimap that they're not really in a sort of centralized position inside of the circle. They're on the absolute edge of this phase three circle. Fury's kind of somewhat close by to them as well. So it's not going to be sort of an easy game here for Archangel Predator by any means off the back of that fight. Julio, Snake in the grass mode. With a bit of help from Jow, man, they're going to be able to find the kill onto God Ace. Eh? Not ideal here for Bantam United, but another team sort of caught in this uh, race from the edge of the circle, trying to make their way inland late, is now getting completely gatecat. So as I sort of said before, teams like Made in Thailand, teams like Bantam United, and maybe even a team like UMP are really going to find themselves struggling here for Phase 3. Phase 4, though, does still keep that day trade compound. Thinking back to earlier, a couple of minutes ago, that big fight win, they're still going to have that position. Fury also now find themselves once again in a pretty favorable spot. Yeah, Archangel Predator quite close by. MSC and BN United running into one another and that has gone phenomenally well for MSC off the back of a couple of nicely placed grenades. Young B spotted out by Rogue. They know that there's at least another player hanging around near these smokes and they're going to eventually dig him out. Copping some shots now for Unicorn Phoenix. MSC doesn't get much room to breathe but they've at least cleared out some parts of their area of the map. They do have a lot more work to do. They've got a lot more ground to cover. They'll have to go past Unicorn Phoenix through Cerberus. And 36 Cartel might have shots in on that as well. So it's going to be messy up toward the north. Yeah, but this is what we kind of expected. And honestly, it hasn't quite been as chaotic as I maybe thought it would be. Hungvo Ditch knocked down. That's why Kikabu Cow, who just continues to dominate in terms of damage and kills. And Unicorn Phoenix, the team that's probably in the same precipice as Fury, stuck inside of that little shack as CJ is peppering from a long distance away for Archangel Predator. Chu, feeling the pinch, feeling the pressure, not inside of the circle. Still obviously wanting to try and get Hungvo Ditch back up and alive as well for Unicorn Phoenix. It's a bit of a track to go get him, but it's probably the worthwhile option. It does look like Archangel Predator have a nice elevated position with some real nice sniping angles over the vast majority of the circle that's left. So they are in with a chance of really being an annoying mosquito for a lot of teams. Attack all around with their hopes and dreams relying on glooms. Probably don't have much to say about the rest of this game. Seriu, same can be said for Sunshine. He's just one man and he's about to get cleared out here as well. All the util coming through from Easy Esports. But he has managed to get a Molotov down, which will buy another couple of crucial seconds. Doesn't look like he's going to get bailed out of trouble here, though. There are too many teams around, but none particularly interested in helping Sunshine out. Easy Esports might have given up the chase. I don't know. Grenade still in hand for Smell. Really not too far to go for Sunshine, but he can't hide behind the mattresses. Good cover. Well, they can't give up on this at all, Easy. They're going to have to flush him out. You can't leave him lingering inside of this building. You need this building for yourself, really. Uh, easy esports can't necessarily go anywhere else for the time being here for phase four. Obviously, phase five can maybe change things, and if it doesn't necessarily favor this position, maybe you just leave him in there and, and run away. But yeah, Sunshine obviously still has four more smokes. He can buy a bit of time, but what's the end goal there? It's it's not really much. It's just being a bit of a pass to sharper esport. This is on the very south side of the circle. Trying to just clear out Glooms on the balcony. Glooms fires first. Unfortunately, though, misses the mark. Well played there from Sharper, not just pushing out onto him, and they're just now getting the reinforcements to arrive. Oh, Six sacks goes down, so does Belmont, and he's going to kill them both. That's probably the game sealed for Sharper. Don't sense Maximus is going to be able to do anything from three down to one, courtesy of Glooms. An attack all around do go out, though, but take Sharper to the grave with them. Well done from Glooms. He's really put a bullet into Sharper Esports for their chances in this round as well. Sharper have been having a rough time, so they won't be happy with that, but... That's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Cerberus Esports off the back of uh, a previous win. Game one of this evening. Still have four alive up toward the northern side of the map. It is a little busy over there with Unicorn Phoenix and Fury and even Archangel Predator headed in that direction. So it'll be tough to get through it, but they might still. Two wins in a row would be very nice indeed. Game home.
headed in the direction of the colony, who are all over the place. They're up inside of the, the cliff face. They're inside of the building. The game home seems to be weeding them out quite nicely. God News position is all powerful. Nice. All seeing. Eyes in the sky. And game home reap the benefits. And Sunshine gets cleared out. So that's Cyro U Esports out in 12th position. Colony down to just Killer and Alec. Losing carbs. Momonji's not going to be able to get brought back up. Cheeky position here for Chloris. Oh, he's got to win this fight, though. Chloris, Alec. Oh, Chloris actually wins it. That killer does get the trade. Still has more to deal with. Doesn't go for the plus just yet either. Still just waiting for the player to push him, which is God new. And he plays it perfectly. Now he can get the revive as well onto his teammate in Chloris. Colony. Eliminated in 11th position. We're down to 10 teams remaining. And look at this up north. UMP, Cerberus, Fury, Archangel Predator in the distance as well. Severely congested north side of this phase 5 zone. One minute to move. Unicorn Phoenix won't be too happy with the time that's given to them because they have players pressuring them from both sides. Cerberus out to the east. Fury down toward the southwest. And it is not a spot that you'd want to be getting stuck in. Yes, they've got high ground control. They do have that element of an advantage. But look at how grouped up Unicorn Phoenix are. If there was a pincer strike between Cerberus and Fury right now, Cerberus would be done. Fury, however, a little bit prevented from pushing their way up this hill by all of those shots coming through from Archangel Predator. Dungeon Bots continues to creep his way forward. You can see Flood out toward the back as an insurance fund to make sure that Fury doesn't get wrapped upon. Layers upon layers, the strategies coming through from all of these teams. Day trade get a knock on the Shin V. They'll try to pick the pace up down there as well, but this is a relatively enticing fight toward the north. Still, we'll go back over to that day trade and easy esports battle. They have dispatched of Klee as well. Easy losing a couple, and day trade continue to put in work in this game. A southern hard shift as well is horrible news. For Fury, Unicorn Phoenix, and Cerberus, all three of those teams are going to have to move. And that is going to result in a bloodbath. Yeah, I mean, there's pretty much every team is going to have to move, though, with this kind of circle. I don't necessarily think it favors too many. Archangel Predator, to a degree, you could say, is looking pretty decent. But even the teams up north, Cerberus, Fury, UNP, uh, they're going to be in that sort of bloodbath. Bath up to the north side. Amish Chomburi, what do they do now? They've got to move, obviously, into the circle. Where do they go? Do they wrap up north, try and take the fight with these teams up to the north? Winner, winner, chicken dinner percentage is kind of estimating that Archangel Predator are in a pretty good spot. Amish Chomburi as well uh, in the second position here on that graphic. They've got the seven kills, by the way, for Amish Chomburi. Still a decent amount of utility available as well. Cerberus, no kills yet. Which is surprising considering how many teams have sort of been around their position over the last five to ten minutes. Now the push comes. Insight though with the Org in hand. Doesn't take the initial shots. That Well, he did take the initial shots, but not the follow-up shots on the Hungvo Ditch. The nade though from Waikikamukau. It's like he just called in the artillery and Waikikamukau just says, no worries, I've got you covered. Sends it in. Gets the knock, and suddenly that could be UMP finding themselves in a precarious position here. Hung Voditch does get eliminated by Cal. Cal now looking for a second player as well in quick succession. Not able to find it immediately. The nade from Archangel Predator, also now on top of UNP, who have gone for a position closer to center of the zone. But with that comes the position of a lot of eyes on their spot. It does look like Cerberus and Unicorn Phoenix had different ideas as to what Fury did as to how they should play out this circle. Unicorn Phoenix and, and Cerberus, they just sort of send it toward the middle. They try to make that rotation fast, whereas Fury is more than happy to continue to play edge. They're trying to deal with Archangel Predator. Algen Bots' position could be a big key factor. It doesn't look like Flood and Ronan are as of yet aware that he is inside of that shack. And if he is able to peek out at the right time, double down, that'll be curtains for Fury in another round. And Archangel Predator off to the races, controlling the northern side of the map. Oh. Algen Bots, he's been spotted. Shots coming through. Gets oh. the better. No, he doesn't. Oh, Flood. Ronan bails him out as well. And Algen Bots is finished off. Shots coming through from Unicorn Phoenix. CJ with a big spray. Gets rid of Waikikamukau. But there are still Fury members headed in the direction of Archangel Predator. Hunting them down. Fury gets one. 
and Flood gets knocked in response. There is Archangel Predator up being eliminated just in time for Fury to get a couple of reses as the zone pushes them in. They are playing a knife's edge at the moment, Xenox, but they are playing it perfectly. Unicorn Phoenix making their move. They know that Fury's wounded. They cannot allow them to push in. Goodbye to Day Trade. Smell says, smell you later. He cleans them up single-handedly. All four of them just get sent packing. Up to the north, though. Unicorn Phoenix looking to get involved and punish Fury here. Down to three players. Uh, this beautiful team in orange. And Unicorn Phoenix are not going to be no an easy push through. Three up for them as well. Ronan with that high ground lands a few tags onto Van. Inside with a good angle as well. Ronan, they both connect, but they're both unable to find the knockdown. That blue behind that rock. Some good tags as two. Knockdown onto Insight. Cow's able to get the trade though immediately. Onto that blue. The numbers starting to just form here for Fury. But they lose Ronan. They've actually lost Insight as well. It's only White Kicker Mukau that is remaining and he no longer lives. Killed by two. And Unicorn Phoenix win this exchange against Fury. Yeah, Unicorn Phoenix just had a way better position than Fury did, and Fury stuck without any smokes, didn't have any time to play with. They just had to push down the hill, and they had no cover on the way there, so the shots had to be perfect, and I mean, look, there were some decent ones coming through from Fury, but it would have been a miracle to make it out of that one with all three players alive. Unicorn Phoenix do continue to survive, but only down to the last remaining couple of players. MSC is looking like the team to beat at the moment. They've got four, they've got 43 frags on the board, 13 of which have come in this game, and they are really starting to pump those numbers up. MSC, if they were to win this game, would jump into first place for week number three. Wow. Just really highlights how open this is for week three at the moment. MS John Burry could gain a lot of money. They have got three and a half thousand so far. Julio, the double kill onto Chiburot and Vandal 9 of Eagle 365. Hansi now is the only one that's left throwing out all of the utility that he still has available for himself. Five teams, 11 alive here, late into our second game of the day. Chiburot's gone. 15 kills now for MS Chomburi. They are racking up the kills, looking to also rack up the win. They're the only team that has four players alive. The other teams don't even have three, Jordan. Yeah, this is what should be a walk in the park for MSC. If they can play it out correctly, they just have to ensure they find the trades. They've done so there. Wait for a couple of the other teams to maybe go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That's what's happening between Smell and Game Home at the moment, though he backs away, hides inside of the grass. Eventually, he's caught up on by Chloris. And now it's down to a four on two on two. Ooh. Unicorn Phoenix is in between Game Home and MSC. They're in the ridge line. 16. How many more can they get? Four. They can go for a 20 bomb if they can clean up all the remaining players. Rogue finds Van. That's at least another one. That's 17. The counter ticks over. Chloris, though, knocked down onto Rogue. And if he can find the flush, suddenly then three players up for MS Chomburi suddenly is no longer going to be a given here. Chloris, though, absolutely peppered by Skeet, but stays alive and now can fall back and heal. Godnew takes the offensive, throws out the Molotovs to try and deny position for MS Chomburi to push on. It's looking pretty good here for oh, MSC. Oh, Chu. Chu's just keeping his head down. He could still be a thorn in the side and maybe find a way to steal away a win. It depends on what Game Home can do here. A couple of knocks would be absolutely massive onto MSC. They've, of course, got the numbers, but it's not set in stone just yet. Chu's got to flank them here and, and do so at the same time that MS Chomburi take the fight with the two remaining players of Game Home. If that happens, it creates a three versus four. One behind, two in front, knocked down mm. onto Rogue. Of course, it's very difficult here for Chu because, well, he's not actually teaming with Game Home. He's not actually in the in the comms with them. He's got no idea of what's actually going on. When does he move? When does he not move? Uh, and if he does move too early, then obviously Game Home's not going to be able to capitalize. If he moves too late, then he's not going to be able to help out Game Home. So it's such a, a game of timing. Or maybe he just gets found out, holds on, knocked out. Oh, the Skeet, shoot. he gets a second one onto Julio. There's still two more up though for MS Game Home, got to go. Rogue, they get the kill onto the solo. And as you said, Jordan, it's time for Chloris and Godnew. This is the green light. You've got to make the push. But Rogue covers as best that as he can with the barrel. The revives need to take place now. And obviously they've got 
got Jao Man watching. He is the guard. He is making sure that Game Home cannot push on this position. No frag grenades for God New. Game Home don't actually have a whole lot to work with. Well, unfortunately for God New, they've missed out on that timing. It was an opportunity presented by Chu Skeet. Still on the floor right now, but three back up for MSC means that they have the numbers advantage and shots are starting to come on through. This could well be a 20 kill win for MSC and one that they have been searching desperately for here, not only in week three, but in the entirety of PCS5. It's been a really rough run for MSC, but now it might finally be their time to have some fun in the sun. Skeet still left on the floor. They've opted not to revive him. They reckon they can get it done with three. I wonder if that's going to come back and bite them. You would have to think that they're going to be able to get the job done here, even with three. They've been so impressive in this game. I don't know what the record is for PCS5 APAC kill wins. Rogue knocked down onto, onto God.